Hi, I'm Daniel, and before the episode starts, I want to briefly talk to you about the Garden Outreach Project, a WCF program focused on putting faith into action. Our mission is to inspire and support Christadelphians in North America to share Christ's love through outreach initiatives. This is done by facilitating national and local outreach activities, supplying resources, and providing funds to help brothers and sisters serve those in need. For example, in 2020, over 40 ecclesial groups participated in our Bags of Love initiative, which saw over 800 sleeping bags distributed to shelters and those without a home. If you, your ecclesia, or CYC want to learn more and get involved with our latest initiative, please visit our website at www.thegardenoutreach.org. You can also follow us on Facebook and Instagram at The Garden Outreach for the latest news and encouragement. And now, here's the show. Welcome back to Little Faith. Tonight I'm here with Sam Taylor from Pause to Consider. Hi Sam, how are you doing? Helen, I'm really great. How are you tonight? I'm good, I'm good, thank you. Yeah. Let's dig into Pause to Consider. Um, so Pause to Consider has been going for the last two years, would you say? Yeah, yeah, we're going to be hitting two, um, I say we're, but yeah, it's it's hitting two years in uh, March. So that's that's actually pretty wild when you think about it. I didn't think it would go on. This, I didn't know what to expect, really, but I'm, I'm grateful it's been going on and it still continues to march on as I have ideas. <laughs> and what made you start the podcast? I was inspired by actually uh, Chris Atwood and Levi Jelano's podcast, Good Christadelphian Talks. I remember when it first came out, I thought it was such a great idea. You know, we've had podcasts for, I feel like, ages, but I really hadn't seen any Christadelphians take advantage of the, you know, the mediums available to us, especially now that smartphones are so, you know, prevalent throughout the States and Canada. Podcasts are just a part of people's lives now. It's the way that people get enriched. It's the way people get their information. They hear stories. So seeing that Christadelphians were using that to preach the gospel and use it to, you know, they're showing good classes that are either, you know, that expound on principles or tell stories or just encourage. And I remember listening to them and I, and I love the classes, by the way, I, I've, you know, I thoroughly enjoy the podcast and I'm, and I'm sitting here thinking, this is great. Yeah. I also recognize that you is got a, you've got a decent size commitment that you've got to put aside in order to listen to a talk. I'm sitting here thinking that, you know, there's a lot of busy people. I, I, you know, personally, I work anywhere from 10 to 14 hours a day in front of a computer and I'm in a, you know, fast paced environment. I work in transportation. So I'm working, you know, on the phones in front of the computer with alongside dispatch. So for me, uh, you know, an hour long podcast is a pretty, you know, big commitment of my time. I've, I've budgeted so much to work and I've budgeted so much to sleep. So yeah, it's a whole meal. Like uh, an hour is a whole meal, but I feel like your podcast is more of a snack. It's a spiritual. Yeah, snack. exactly. Yeah. So, uh, you know, and I'm, I'm thinking about the kind of people that can relate to that. And, and I had a lot of people in mind. I, I, I have a, a good friend of mine, uh, a good friend of mine and his wife, you know, um, one of my best friends in Michigan, they, you know, she's a, stay at home mom with, well, now she has three kids, but at the time she had two, you know, she's got a, you know, she's got a five-year-old and a three-year-old and a less than a one-year-old. And, you know, I I can't imagine that kind of chaos going around, but trying, trying to imagine a stay at home mom with three young children ranging from toddlers to little babies. I I can't imagine saying, well, I'm going to go into my study now, just, you know, shut the door and hope for the best. Um, I can't imagine that, nor could I imagine, you know, college students running around hectic, you know, trying to go from class to class and, you know, dorms, of course, this was, you know, pre-COVID and, or, you know, juggling work and juggling study. And it's, it's just, it's hard. It's, it's hard for a lot of people. And I think sometimes what happens is that you get this kind of all or nothing mentality when it comes to engagement in 
in your faith. Mm. You know, there's, there's always these, you know, difficulties, like, why am I struggling with Bible study? Why am I struggling with my prayer life? Why? And, and the goals are like so lofty. It's like, okay, in order for me to be a good Bible student, I have to do my three daily readings every single day. And if I miss that, I fall off the wagon and all of a sudden I'm a failure. And, you know, same thing with prayer life, you know, you know, people, I, I, and I, and I say people, but I mean me, (laughs) Um, you know, trying to be, okay, well, I'm going to be like Daniel. I'm going to pray three times a day outside my window. And it's like, I wake up in the morning and I'm already 15 minutes late for work. So, okay, there goes breakfast. And then, you know, there goes my morning prayer and then work is crazy. And then, oh, there goes my afternoon prayer. And I finally get home and I collapse in exhaustion. Well, okay. So I guess, you know, then after that, I just say, well, that was the dismal failure. And I give up because it's like, if every day is going to be like that, how can I, Mm. how can I have very high expectations of ourselves? Yeah. So this was kind of an effort to, to say, you know, you don't need to like shoot for the moon to, to get nourishment from the Bible. It happens in, you know, measurable, you know, small measurable steps, not these big leaps and bounds. Uh, Another way I like thinking about it too, is that, you know, you've with, if you've got what I, my episodes are usually less than 15 minutes. So I'm trying to, you know, trying to get a whole salient point out there for people to pause and pause to consider, right? Mm. You can't feed people a whole meal there. You can't, you know, if people are looking for what they can get, you, you give them something they can bite onto, but also something they can expand on if they want. Right. I mean, I used to teach high school English and I remember doing my teacher training and we were always encouraged to give our students thinking time. And that means pausing (laughs) and giving them time to think before they respond in any way or before they write or before they start reading and they they just need thinking time. And I think that's what I love about pause to consider. It is about that pause. It is about stopping and listening and and just having some time to think and clear your head. Yeah. And it's actually, you know, you know, as we are talking about pause, you know, it it comes into sort of the inspiration for the name because, you know, I heard good Christadelphian talks like, okay, well that's, you know, pretty straightforward, but when I'm, you know, when I'm thinking about what I want to do, which are sort of bite-sized devotionals, I'm, you know, I want to have something that's, you know, catchy, but gets the message across. And of course, the first thing I want to do is like, okay, I'll, I'll take that word from the Psalms. I'll take the, the sila, right. That, that word that's used in the Psalms, which indicates a break, a time to pause, reflect on the words, reflect on everything in the Psalm. And of course I went to go look it up to see if that name was taken. And that was a mistake because there's like, dozens of podcasts with some form of seal. Okay. So like, I am just going to like completely, you know, fall behind here. So, all right. So what I need to do is I need to, you know, take that same concept and like, you know, flush it out. What does it mean? You know, it's it's like, okay, well, it means stop. I I don't want to call it stop and think that feels, you know, it's the same meaning almost, but it's, it's, um, it, it felt a little abrupt, but pause to consider just is, is sort of what I want to do. I, I want it to be, the ability for people to like, you know, not just read something for the sake of reading it, but actually like ruminate on it, right? Like you, you think about, you think about ruminating, you think about it, you know, like the way that cows chew their cud, right? You know, they don't, they don't just scarf down whatever cows eat, they eat grass, right? I feel like cows they eat, do eat lots of grass. Yeah. Okay, good. I'm <laughs> glad I, I know that about cows, right? <clears throat> <No>. <laughs> But the, these days, I think, especially when in the winter, when they come inside, they can they can be given extra stuff that has all sorts thrown into it, even candy, which is a bit crazy. Yeah, also, okay. like I... candy and animal feed. <laughs> a few M and M's. Hey, I mean, whatever, whatever gets them by. I mean, you know, cows cows need their calories. They've they've got a got a body to work on. But you know. Um, but you know, cows, right? Like, like cows don't just scarf down their food and, and neither do sheep, you know, sheep, they, they do a similar fun, you know, they, 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 they ruminate, they, they sit there and they chew their cud and they chew and they chew mm-hmm. and they chew and digest and they're, you know, and, and they're sitting there going through it until it's prop, you know, like all, you know, their whole mechanical systems, you know, knocked it out. And then, and we've kind of got to be the same way. Cause 
And when you're more like the cow and you get that chance to pause, you're, you're better able to appreciate what you're taking in. Mm. And I think, I think that what I want pause to consider to be is a podcast where, yeah, it's, it's only a few minutes, but I want it to be, you know, I, I want it to be a, a dense little nugget that you can spend some time chewing on before you get rid of it. Mm. And you, I feel like you're a natural storyteller. Every podcast seems to start with an interesting idea or a story uh, to connect with your audience and get them thinking. And then, and then you, you get into the, the meat of scripture and connect that somehow with the concept or the story that you're, that you're sharing, which, you know, I, I find fascinating. I, I love collecting, you know, these ideas and that knowledge um, about the world and then how we, you know, how we kind of connect that with our own experience and then our, our reading of the Bible, I think is really important. I love stories. I love stories so much. I, I grew up, you know, reading, you know, fables and myths from, you know, all different cultures growing up, you know, whether it was Beowulf or um, one of my favorite books growing up was this, was this uh, book by an English author called Watership Down. Mm -hmm. and the rabbits? Yeah, the rabbits. Yes. I, lo I loved Watership Down. I mean, my, my dad gave me the book when I was like 14 or 15 and he's like, I couldn't get through it. It bored me. And, and I sat here, I was like, this is amazing. It's got like its own, like these, these rabbits have their own mythology and they have their own way of storytelling. And they, you know, they intersperse parts of the plot with stories that are, you know, stories from their folklore. Um, and I just eat that stuff up because I love being able to, you know, see the world from another person's eyes. I absolutely love that stuff. Mm. And yeah, I, and, you know, I got my storytelling, you know, my, um, my, my dad tells story, my dad, my dad told stories. Um, he told, he told a lot of stories. I oft, often more than one. So I heard them enough to, you know, humor them. Stories for me really resonate. And, and um, you know, what it comes down to is I, I, I think about, I think about the Lord Jesus and, you know, you, you, you get an idea when, when you read the Sermon on the Mount and he, you know, and he says, consider the lilies, you know, I, I feel like sometimes we go over that. That's like some scripted thing. But when you read Jesus and you, and you see what he's going through, you can, if you put yourself in the mind of somebody who's just connecting the dots, who has that spiritual mind, who's what it is, it, it's, when I, when I read about Jesus telling these stories, talking about these examples, I see the example of a man who looked to see God in anything he came across. Mm. He looked to see how God was present. He looked to see how God's hand had touched it, had impacted it, molded it. And he tried showing his disciples this all the time. Mm. You know? You know, can, you know, I don't imagine them just like going through a script and saying, okay, we're at the lilies part. I just imagine them walking through a field and just being like, look, mm. consider these lilies. Like, you know, they don't toil, they don't spin, they don't do any work, but these, these lilies are more beautiful than anything that Solomon ever wore. You know, I, I imagine that, and that's, and that's what I try to do. I mean, I try to look at examples and in history, in science, in nature, um, my own meandering experiences. And I just try to see God's hand in it somehow. Mm. Yeah, and so I think stories break down barriers and they help connect um, one another, especially when we tell personal stories or even when we tell um, analogies. Um, they, you know, that use of language is to help us understand better. You know, Jesus did that with the parables. Um, and he did that when he even talked one-on-one -on -one with certain individuals because he was trying to heal them or save them or get them to come into his story. Because I think the other beautiful thing for me, especially as a you know, student and teacher of literature, is putting yourself in the story as well and seeing, 
you know, seeing a story from lots of different perspectives, depending on, you know, who's ca- which character you decide to kind of empathize with or connect with. Um, and that can help us understand a story better because I know when I think about the prodigal son, for example, like sometimes we are the prodigal son, <laughs> very much so. But then at other times we're like the jealous older brother who is resentful of someone else getting the best, the best things and getting the attention. Um, and, and the more I read scripture in that way, in, 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 t- in terms of storytelling, like uh, putting ourselves in the story and we're not always the good people. <laughs> no, um, no, no, no. Um, it can be really enriching, humbling and yeah, and enriching. Yeah, it, you know, it reminds me of this, um, one of my personal favorite devotions that I wrote. Actually, it started as a conversation doing the readings with uh, a dear friend of mine. Actually, it was um, Rachel Adams uh, from Discerning Daughters. It was her husband, yes. Brian, who's one of my dear friends. We were doing the readings one day, and this was probably back in about 2012, I want to say. So this is going on nine years ago now. And I still remember this story. We were reading about we were reading about the crucifixion account with Barabbas. And I remember, you know, Brian talking about it in such an intimate, powerful way. And he was the one telling the story. And I was like, I need that. And, and I just kind of like stored it in my data banks. And I, you know, I think it was about two years later, I wrote an exhortation on it. And then I realized, well, this is a great devotion because yeah, you're talking, when you're talking about Barabbas, you know, you're looking at one of the more reviled men in, in history, you know, that he was, he was the he didn't wicked deserve man. to be set free. Yeah, he didn't deserve it, but neither do we. Mm. Neither do any of us. Yet here we are. We we are we have an opportunity to be free from our bondage to sin through Christ. Mm. Deserving? No, but we received it all the same. And you've got and yeah, all of a sudden you start thinking about yourself as Barabbas and you try to, you know, use the justification. Well, you know, I'm not that bad, but are we? And yeah, you've, I mean, and unless you look at a story through those eyes, you're, I mean, who's going to think about Barabbas other than the example that nobody wants to be? Nobody wants to own up to being, you know, one of the most hated men in the Bible. Putting ourselves in different people's shoes, um, I think, is really healthy in um, just not trying to understand one another and even understand ourselves as we as we grow with our relationship with with God and the Lord Jesus. I absolutely agree. It's, um, you know, being able to put yourself in someone else's shoes, um, you know, it doesn't just expand your mind, it expands your capacity to be compassionate as well. Mm. You know, when you, when you better understand the way certain people may think or feel in a situation and you start to become more aware of the struggles that others around you are feeling, you know, you've, you've got this choice, right? You're, if you're, if you're presented with this understanding, you've, you've got a, you know, obligation to react to it, whether you do something about it or shut yourself down. But, you know, I mean, we, that's our opportunity to be Christ to the people around us that we suddenly realize are living a story that we might not be able to live ourselves if we were in their shoes, but mm. we've got a chance to be their support. And we've got a chance to be God's vehicle of prayer to them. And it starts with that empathy that comes from being able to broaden your horizons and expand your perspective outside of yourself. How has the podcast affected you and, and your faith journey? It's challenged me to look outside myself more to always be on the lookout to see God's hand in something. Mm. Um, You know, whether I'm, whether I'm reading an article online or whether I'm seeing an interaction or whether I'm in and part of a conversation or interaction, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm challenged to see how God is at work Um, to see if I'm in that, if I'm, part of the anecdote am i am i aiding his work or am i harming his work 
trying to see God's hand in, in everything. And by no means do I succeed at it, but it, it challenges me every day to, to at least be more aware that, to be aware of God's presence, to be mindful of God's presence and to help facilitate the awareness of God's presence to others. In other words, to, you know, for people who might not be considering God's presence or who might not, you know, feel God's presence to make them aware that God is present in so many things at once. And our, our challenge is to look and to take a breath and just, you know, observe and learn and, think about it mm. yeah see c.s lewis said that we read to know that we are not alone um and i definitely think that's true from reading the bible and reading god's word but i think with podcasts trying to connect you know you are it's for an audience you're obviously not just talking to yourself um there is that act of sharing something to connect with others so that they that something might resonate with them and that they don't feel alone and that that our experiences have a lot more in common than we think. I absolutely agree with that, you know, especially when it comes to the negative ones, the things that, you know, whether we're too afraid or too proud to share, there's a lot of negative experiences that we all feel daily that, are too common to the human experience. Yet so often, the only way we feel we can approach them is sort of by an abstract attack from the side. You know, we talk about things like mental illness and pride and, you know, sexual immorality. You know, we'll talk about these things from kind of a, a generic lofty using the, you know, plural, you know, we've all sinned. We all fall short of the glory of God. We're all tempted. We all, fa you know, like it, it's, it's, you know, they're true statements, but they also lack that, um, the thrust of being able to personally identify when you use a singular pronoun like I. I sin, I fail, I struggle with pride and lust and depression, and I fail, and I'm not as kind as I want to be, and I'm not as charitable as I want to be, and I'm not as devoted as I want to be. And all of a sudden, I try avoiding talking, to, you know, on the podcast. I try imagine it like I'm talking to somebody, whether whether I'm talking to uh, you know my my girlfriend Gwen, or oh, whether I'm talking imagine myself talking to a friend. I I try to imagine it not in this vague abstract, but just you know trying to own that I'm a flawed human being, and hope that if I put myself out there and say that with that people listening will be able to hear that and um, internalize that to say, yeah, I am too. When you hear someone talking to you directly using the first person, you have this opportunity to, to internalize it and to process it in a different way. Cause when you, when you take on a, we sort of thing, well, there's a saying that goes a drop of water never feels responsible for a tsunami, right? Mm. <laughs> yet, yet, you know, every drop of water contributes and every drop of water has some ownership, even if it's minuscule in the same way. When you, when you discuss sin and, and not, and not just sin in this abstract, we all fail, but you know, the ugliness of pride and greed and self-interest and you, and you take that and you, and you put it out in the forefront and you say, I, well, all of a sudden you're, you're telling that one little drop of water. Yeah. You've, you know, you've got to take some ownership in this, you know, yeah, the world stinks and the world is full of wickedness and greed, but you've got to look at yourself in the mirror and recognize that unless you're, you know, living the life of Jesus Christ and, you know, Present, you know, presenting yourself as a sacrifice to God and to your brothers and sisters, you, you're part of that tsunami. But owning it is is the first part of, you know, being able to, you know, find solutions and mm. and to recognize 
you know, when you have ownership, then you, ha then you have an opportunity to take initiative. And I always try to end my podcast with something, I, I try to end it with something practical. I don't always have the best practical solutions, but I don't particularly like getting someone to a point and then leave them hanging with the question, well, that's great, but what am I supposed to do with it? Not that I have all the answers to that. I hardly have the answers for myself half the time, but. Yeah, that needs to be a call to action and an encouragement. And I, I certainly think you do that. Um, you end with like a really encouraging verse, usually, and something to that's concrete. And that, I think that's really important. I listen to your podcast while I'm doing my dishes, but I, lots of other people listen to them on their commute. I know there's not so many people commuting at the moment, but in their cars or going on trains or buses. And some people even use your podcast as exhortations, especially in very small ecclesias or house ecclesias, but there's just a, you know, a small group of people they've used your podcast as a, as an exhortation to then have a discussion and then to break bread um, and drink wine and remember the Lord Jesus. And I, I think that's really beautiful that that's, um, they have like multi-purpose. That's, that's humbling actually, you know, um, and that is something that's, you know, you, you asked me you know, what's changed about me since I've started this podcast. And, and that's, that's something else that's changed is, Realizing that when proclaiming Jesus, you know, in my life, whether it be words or whether it be actions, it doesn't need to be this, you know, eloquent diatribe. It doesn't need to be a 45 minute talk. I've learned about the simple things. Since I've done pause to consider, you know, I've, you know, my, I, I've got some simple rules. I, I try at all costs to go no more than 10 minutes of, you know, 10 to 12 minutes of actual, you know, devotion, the meat of the actual podcast. I try to avoid keeping, I try to keep that under 12 minutes. I also try to keep my references under three, you know, three references, three to four. So, cause I don't want to have, you know, I, I want people to be able to understand that what I'm talking about is couched in scripture, but I also don't, I, I don't want them to be distracted necessarily by, you know, flipping all the pages that are reading kind of the same thing. I just try to choose the most efficient passage, which gets the point across and move on from there. So I, I remember reading one time how, you know, one of the early members of the Christadelphian community, he, um, you know, he would give, like, he would go no more than 15 minutes in an exhortation. I was like, okay, so. I'm, I'm just going to, you know, I, I try to write my exhortations the way I write my podcast. Maybe it's a little bit more, you know, stuff at the beginning and the end to talk to people and make it, you know, memorially, memorially. I'm, can, I'm rolling. Rem with it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> um, there's people there who are struggling and, you know, they might not have, you know, they might be tired from working overnight shifts or, you know, be struggling at home with family or sick, fa you know, sick family or strife, um, you know, so many troubles that people have. And, and I've realized that, you know, I, I want to feed those people too. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to give them more than they can handle in terms of mental digestion. So I, I want to meet these people where they're at instead of forcing this burden on them to meet me on some lofty academic pedestal. So pause to consider has, you know, shifted my mindset to, I believe Paul says something along like be all things to all men. So that by means by which I might save some. And part of that means embracing the brevity. You know, when you think about who people say are some of the best writers of the 20th century, you know, one of them that inevitably comes up is Ernest Hemingway. And if you've ever read The Old Man and the Sea, the thing's like 50 pages long. It is not a long book. He was, you know, Hemingway was so brief. And that was another reason where, you know, just because, just because your sentences are concise, but doesn't make the thoughts or the feelings less powerful. No, of course not. And I think your words can have so much weight. I mean, I'm a big lover of the semicolon actually. 
and not, I think it's underused, but the semicolon is does have a role in stopping and pausing. I think it's actually perfect for pause to consider. And and then you continue speaking and you build on your point. Um, How many semicolons did you imagine in that? Which you just said, because I imagined at least two. Oh, as you were, as you were, saying, as you were yeah. talking, you were, you were, yeah, as you, as you were talking, I imagined the point. I was like, okay, there's a good semicolon usage right there. Yeah, and yeah, I think for pause to consider is a semicolon. It's like you stop, then you pause, and then you, you, you know, and then you embellish your point, and then you, you finish. Um, and I think in our lives, as you say, we're busy. It's not just the busyness; it's the noise there's a lot of noise in our lives and I'm not, I'm talking metaphorical noise, not just the physical noise. And we need to be able to cut through it, cut through the noise and ultimately hear the still small voice of God. And that's, you know, I'm so glad you mentioned that because I was trying to figure out music. I remember trying to figure out music to use to introduce the podcast and you know, I came across the piano recordings by uh, Peter Clauston up in uh, the Cleveland area. And that hymn, Dear Lord and Maker of Mankind, I always think about it not as the first verse, but as the last verse about speak through the heats of our desire, thy coolness and by balm. Let sin be dumb, let flesh retire. Speak through the earthquake, wind and fire, O still small voice of calm. And that's what I mm. try to, that's what I hope that people who know the hymn think about maybe not the dear lord and maker of mankind but that last verse because i i I want just that i want to cut through the noise and get to jesus i I want to get to god working in your life and i want to get to god being present in your life and i want to get to each of us channeling that character and striving to serve each other without the noise (laughs) 